chica. All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at uh, domain and range. We'll have uh, other videos for all the other properties of a function. So let's see what they are. The domain is all the values of x with an associated value of y. All that means is that there'll be an x and y coordinate that will perform a point somewhere on the graph. For range, we're looking at just the opposite, all the values of y with an associated values of x. So this will basically be just be saying the minimum and maximum values of the function. Let's take a look at domain first, and we'll look at a few examples. All right, so domain, we're looking at all the values of x and the associated value of y. And take a look at an example here. All right, so we take a look over here. We're going to read from left to right, just as if we're reading a book. And we're going to look at what's the leftermost point on the graph. That would represent the value of x that's the smallest. So that happens right here. And at this point, our x coordinate is 1. All right, now what's our highest value of x? In other words, what's the point farthest to the right on the graph? All right, it happens right there. There's where it would be on the x-axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So our lowest value of x is 1. Our highest value of x is 4. The last thing we need to do is just look at how we're going to uh, write that down. We're going to use the DOM or DOM for domain. F is just referring to that this is called function F. We can see right there. We're going to put equal sign. We're going to put our lowest value of x, which is 1, and then our highest value of x, which is 4, and square brackets around them. The reason we use the square brackets is to show that this represents an interval and not coordinates. We use round brackets, it would uh, indicate the point 1, 4, where in fact both the 1 and the 4 represent our values of x here for an uh, interval as opposed to a point. Let's take a look at another example. All right, here we've got a curve, but the same pieces apply. What's our far point farthest left on the graph? And it would be right here. Our, our x coordinate at that point is 0. If we go f to the right, again, point right there is our farthest to the right, and our x coordinate there, now we have to take a look at the scale, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So our lowest value of x is 0, highest value of x is 80. To write it out, once again, we'll put DOM for domain, F for function F. Actually, in this case, if we take a look up top, up here they're actually calling this function P. So I'm going to put DOM of P instead of F. No big difference, though. Our lowest value is 0. Highest value is 80. And then square brackets around those to show that it's uh, an interval and not a point. Let's look at another one. All right, now this one's a little bit different. We'll notice here it actually continues off the graph. That means that it keeps going on and on in this direction. Same idea over here. It's going to continue on and on in that direction as well. So what's our lowest value of x? Well, if we look at this here where it goes off the graph, that would be at about negative 1.2. But because it goes off, that means this line is going to continue to the left and up. So in this case, it doesn't matter what how low my value of x is. Essentially, I could go all the way down to negative infinity, and there would still be some value of y that would be attached to that value of x. For instance, if we looked at x being negative 2, y would be somewhere up here. If x was negative 3, y would be somewhere up here. Even though those values aren't shown, they still exist. On the right, we got the same thing. It's continuing off to the right and up as well. So our values of x, it's showing the value of x of 3. y is 3. If x is 4, again, we'd be off the charts. But we could continue up with higher and higher values of x all the way up to positive infinity. So our lowest value uh, is negative infinity, or essentially we have no minimum. Highest value of x is positive infinity, again, no maximum. So when we write that down, we we'll still use the DOM F, but rather than write it as an interval, we're just going to put this funny looking R, R with a second line, and that just represents real numbers. So that's basically a way of saying that any value of x will work in this function. Let's look at one last example here. Again, we're going to go from left to right. Our lowest value of x. Now, even though the x-axis goes to negative 3 over here, there's no value of y that's connected with that. In other words, at this point in time, this function over here doesn't exist. There's no points on it. Our lowest value is right here. And that's where x, in this case, is negative 1. Now, we go to the right. And again, we can see it's continuing off here on the right, meaning it'll go all the way 
to positive infinity. So, one last time, dom of f equals, our lowest value is negative 1, our highest value is infinity. Now, I'm going to make one little change here, and you'll notice I still use a square bracket, but this time it's called an, an open bracket. In other words, it's pointing away from the infinity sign. And that's just a way of showing that we can never actually equal infinity. We can equal negative 1, so it's closed over here, but we can't equal infinity, so we put an open bracket on that. Let's take a look at range now. So just the opposite, we're looking at all the values of y with an associated value of x. We'll look at the same example. So now instead of going left to right, we're going bottom to top. Where's our lowest point? Well, happens right here. What's our y coordinate at that lowest point? So before we were looking for x, now we're looking at y. So our lowest value of y is 1. What's our highest value? Well, it peaks right here. And at that point, 1, 2, 3, y is 3. So same idea for domain when we write it, except this time we're going to use ran for range instead of dom. Equals our lowest value of y, which is 1, our highest value of y, which is 3. And we'll put our closed brackets on those. One more time over here. Where is our lowest value? Well, lowest it gets is right here. Now we look at our scale. It says each block is worth 2,000. So we're down two blocks. That's actually negative 4,000 as our minimum. And our maximum occurs right here at the end. And so 2,000, 4,000, 6,000. That's where the y equals 8,000. So now we just got to write it out, the range of f. Our lowest value, negative 4,000. And our highest value is 8,000. And again, we'll put our square brackets around them. Let's look at another. All right, this one here, we said it continued off in both directions. And it's going up. So what's our lowest value? All right, our lowest value occurs right down here, negative 1. Our highest value, well, we have no maximum. It continues higher and higher and higher all the way up to positive infinity. And so range of f, our lowest value is negative 1. We'll close that one. Highest value is infinity, and again, we'll leave that open. And one last example. Again, if we go lowest to highest, here we know that this continues off, so it's going to keep going down, 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 down. So it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So our lowest value then will be negative infinity. And uh, we'll put an open bracket on that because it can never actually equal negative infinity. And our highest value is right there. One, two, three. And there we go. Look for other videos and all the other properties of a function. Bye-bye.